This week on CrossFeed. Santa's death sentence. Science, creation, or discrimination. Christmas in 3D. The lot falls to the Christians. And a pastor cashes in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hey, I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. We're all back. We are all mourning because the Patriots lost. Yeah, really sorry to hear that there. Um, sure you are. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're sort of investigating, you know, all those bird kills that have been happening and, you know, mm-hmm. like that one, um, in Atlanta with where all the Falcons died. <laughs> and we oh, went in Pittsburgh man. where all the Ravens died. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll see. See, I, I was pushing for a, um, <laughs> a repeat of, um, the um, Packers versus the Patriots, or oh, the yeah, um, you Bears mean, versus the Patriots. You Packers Patriots, like like we had before, where you guys barely squeaked by because you were playing against our second our second string quarterback the whole game. You know, no, you I was thinking that, that the Super Bowl that was down in New Orleans. Oh, so oh, you're going back a little ways. Yeah, and Super Bowl twenty between the Bears and the Patriots. You know, yeah. You see, everybody. Dale was very nice to remind me that this weekend was the celebration anniversary of Super Bowl One, which was between Green Bay and Kansas City, mm-hmm. and we remember Green Bay didn't lose. And uh, <laughs> so, you know. Uh, um, by the way, the first Super Bowl was not called the Super Bowl. It was called the AFL NFL AFL NFL Championship Game. I did not know that. That was the title. And uh, it was not called the Super Bowl until I think the number three. And it was named after the Super Bowl. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Lamar Hunt named it. His son Clark had a Super Bowl. And he saw the name Super Bowl, and he thought that would be a great name for a football, uh, for us to call the championship. So they called it the Super Bowl. And Lamar Hunt came up with a name for it. Cool. Never knew that. Mm-hmm. Say, I'm just a font of little, little, little trivia about the game. Yep. That's that's what you get when you suffered without your team being in it for so many years. But that's beside the point. It's good to be back. Hope you had a good Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, we had a great one. You know, it's always one of the things that I always enjoy uh, about uh, Christmas. You know, besides obviously getting together with family and all that kind of stuff. Um, but also because, uh, we spend time with family, um, I always take some time off and, um, and I get to go to, to other churches and, um, and it's always interesting to see sort of what they're doing, um, at their churches and, and, and things like that. And, and I've got some just within my family, even though our, our family's pretty much all Missouri Synod Lutherans, there's quite a bit of diversity, um, from church to church and, um, some are little country churches and, and some are city churches and, and things like that. And, and they do things differently. And, and it's always interesting to see uh, how they do that stuff. Yeah, ours was nice. We actually just my wife and I on Christmas Day. And then uh, actually we celebrated Christmas last weekend. And my daughter was up from Georgia and my son and his fiance were out. And we had a really nice time. So it was just good to have everybody over here. So, uh, anyway, let's get started. Well, we might as well start with Christmas here. There's a couple of Christmas stories that we've got. Yeah. Um, and well, we're talking about Christmas services. Yeah, let's start with the Christmas services. Um, maybe this is, I don't know, one of the themes for all these, a lot of the stuff is overkill. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is, the, 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 the both of these stories strike me as being, there's like three stories today, all of them strike me as being overkill, and this is one of them. Yeah. All right, so we've got, um, this is in uh, Grapevine, Texas, uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 
and um, it's, it's two different uh, churches that are, um, and the, the one in particular I heard a lot about, um, and, and that was their Christmas service in 3D. That you, um, we had Christmas service in 3D. <laughs> we did, man. I was standing right there. It was 3D. I was like, you were really there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was really there, right in front of the people. Yeah, we even did that with our children's Christmas program. Man, it was like if you, if you went up there, you could like reach out and touch them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but uh, so let's see. They. Uh, we're doing 3D Christmas because people are looking for height, width, and depth in their lives. We'll have some of our musical numbers using video in 3D. Uh, this is uh, their pastor, Young, um, <clears throat> said it took four hours to video the first three minutes of his Christmas 3D message, which fo- focuses on his dogs. The three dogs force open the back door, then proceeded to tear into presents, candy, and everything else they could reach. I'm talking about what's eating your Christmas, or what's eating you this Christmas. He said of his message, this isn't Avatar, it's more like Jaws 3. Well, I'm glad it's not like Avatar, because that's not a very good movie. Um, but uh, come to think of it, Jaws 3D wasn't a very good movie either. So. <laughs> I wonder if you remember, that was called, it was actually Jaws 3 in 3D. It was, it was Jaws 3, yeah, but it wasn't very good either, come to think of it. But um, um, Now, what it is, this is, this, is, this is the church that has a bunch of satellites. They have six satellites. And so they're all hooked up then by, you know, so he's in, you know, one church and he's being broadcast to the other churches and, and out, up on video screens. Mm-hmm. And so then they're given the 3D glasses so he and his wife can can be seen. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, you know, between the, the main campus and its five, or there's five, five campuses, there were 21 services you could attend. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I got I, that, which I just like, wow, uh, how, how do you do that? Um, I'm not sure. Do, do they, do they tape the, tape it and then, you know, show it at each place? Stream. Or is that a, I mean, is it, is it streaming? I mean, but how do you do that? Because then you, you if you got 21 services and it says it starts at six tonight, do you want to do one at six, one at seven, one at eight, one at nine? And that only gives you, 20 services. I mean, how, how late did this, I just wanted to know how, what their, what their, what their schedule was and how late did these things go. But, but anyway, I don't know. I just think, you know, I just like, uh, um, it starts off though and it says, uh, that, um, he and his wife, Lisa, would pop out out of a gift rock, bo- gift wrapped box to greet people who hold a specially designed invitation up to their computer's webcams. I mean, okay, it's, it's an interesting it's a part of this that just strikes me as getting a little tacky. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. forget about the manger. You get me and my wife. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, all right. First of all, it's an interesting gimmick. All right. You get, you know, a postcard in the mail inviting you to the service and, and says you can go go online and, and do this. And, and, you know, and people will be like, okay, what's the effect? And so you get it and you hold it up to your webcam and you, and then, you know, Boing, you get this 3D effect or whatever. Okay. So, um, so that'll at least get people's interest. But, um, but then, yeah, it, there is, this is something I see at a lot of churches where there's sort of this big emphasis on the pastor, um, as opposed to the message. And I'm not saying that they're deliberately doing that, um, but it can kind of come across that way. And then what happens when the pastor leaves that church, whether, um, whether because he feels called to another church or because he, uh, uh, is no longer able to be the pastor there because he dies or is, um, you know, has some sort of medical condition that prevents him from doing it or, or whatever. Um, you know, that's a, then all of a sudden the church falls apart. Or like, look, look what's happened with to the Crystal Cathedral. Mm-hmm. You know, Bob Schuler couldn't do it anymore, and they had to file bankruptcy. Yeah, you know, so that kind of thing. Okay, here it is. Yeah, the um, yeah, it it, it has uh, had an all listed here. Uh, the three D services were 
6 p.m., whatever day this was published, two services Sunday, two services Thursday, three services Friday. And then at another church, 11 and 10, 10 and 11.30 Sunday and 3 and 5 on Friday. So, yeah, there's, that's quite a different quite a few different places there that they do that. That, that must be an interesting ministry. And he said something like 45,000 people for that week in their Christmas services. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. I, um, I saw, I was, I follow Rick Warren on Twitter and, and he was posting how many, um, services they had. And it was, it was more than that. Um, it was like 45 services or something like that. But yeah, it's, it's not all Christmas Eve. And, and in his case, I don't think he's doing them all. They've got other pastors all as part of their sort of network. Um, in the city, so I'm not exactly mm-hmm. sure how all that works, but, um, but yeah, the, I mean, it it opens up a lot of of interesting sort of possibilities on on how to do ministry, and you sort of run into some questions about, um, you know, would you go to church to watch the pastor on TV, you know? But I suppose a lot of them, you get this this big, huge, crowded hall or whatever, and, um. You're basically just watching the screen anyway, because he's, you know, tiny up there on the stage. So, um, and and they've got a big old screen showing him, and that's what you're watching anyway. So, I guess at that point, what's the difference? Um, it's it's not it, it's it's a worship service, but it's it's not like you're doing communion with a crowd like that, or you know, um, probably not on Christmas anyway. Right. I mean, it's a different style of ministry you and I would be used to. Right. Uh, and we'd have to work to be used to it, but, but my, uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, I don't know. I think I'll do 3D my way. Thank you very much. Uh, but I won't go killing Santa Claus. No. <laughs> All right. Now, there are certain things that I just find this, <laughs> this was from a, uh, from the secular news daily, um, which is an atheist site and <laughs> there's this organization <clears throat> down in uh, Amarillo, Texas. Texas. Amarillo, Texas, called Repent Amarillo. And uh, they they normally focus on picketing strip clubs and pornographic uh, and, and, and photographic patrons of adult oriented businesses. Okay, so I that doesn't bother me. But they took a paper mache Santa and they put him in front of a firing squad. And they killed him, uh, shot it, for his crimes against Jesus. And, you know, put the whole thing up on YouTube. Uh, it, this is, all right. This is so, um, oh, for lack of a better word, redneck. <laughs> I was going to say obnoxious. <laughs> okay, so he's reading but off of Gail's this. from Green Bay, so he probably knows what's redneck. So I'm not, you know, I'm, you know. <laughs> he's 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 reading off of this scroll and the the sort of um you know uh, rollers or whatever of the scroll are are two giant crayons, <laughs> and two giant plastic crayons. <laughs> Which I'm not sure what the significance of that is, and something tells me it was just like we need some sticks. <laughs> but I don't know. But yeah, it's or it's it'd be all... something say something about the mentality and the maturity of the people doing this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know it's uh well here's uh, a couple of the the things you have sought to substitute yourself. For the place of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, during the Christmas season, you are thus guilty of being a symbol of idolatry. You have sought to become a stumbling block for parents who lie to their children that you exist to bring them gifts. And you are thus guilty of being a stumbling block. You have sought to remove benevolence from, Christ- from Christmas, turn it into a festival of gluttony and greed with rampant commercialism. You are thus guilty of inciting covetousness. And there's things like Spirit of Christmas instead of the Holy Spirit and um, and, and all kinds of stuff. So the problem is here is the um the Jesus that they're defending um isn't really a firing squad kind of guy. <laughs> uh, okay. 
So we all struggle with that balance between commercialism and Christ. You know, we we all struggle with that. Um, you know, but I'm not, you know, and you know, and I I don't know. I mean, my kids, we did the whole Santa Claus thing. It was fantasy. It was make believe. It was fun. The kids enjoyed it. We enjoyed it with the kids. Our rule, though, uh, which I instituted, was um, that Santa brought little things for their stockings. Yeah, you know, they got you know big gifts and things came from mom and dad and everything. Santa Claus would give little extra things for their stockings. You know, and you know, I, you know, I don't know. Um, and yeah, some people okay, they they. There, there is a secular side to Christmas. Christmas was, that's always been there. I mean, uh, I think they, they point out here that, um, during the, you know, one of the, um, com- commenters talk about, you know, that, uh, when, you know, the Calvinist under Cromwell took, uh, you know, took over, uh, Christmas, that, uh, you know, took over, you know, they wanted Christmas to be like any other working day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they didn't want <laughs> the to acknowledge Scrooges. Christmas. Being- <laughs> yeah, they, they want to acknowledge Christmas as being anything special, you know. Um, but that was that was an anti-Romanism. Uh, I mean, it was it was forbidden to celebrate Christmas in the uh, in in Massachusetts, Massachusetts Bay Colony, uh, because it was a pa- it was a papist ho- papist day. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I guess this group goes right along with them. I don't know. No, they they they. So maybe they maybe maybe we ought to call them. Um, you know, maybe we ought to maybe we ought to contact and say, you know, by talking about Christmas, you're, you're supporting the papists. <laughs> I guarantee you, this is not a Roman Catholic group. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I mean, it, you know, the, one and one of the other commenters mentioned, um, you know, and this is something that you also have to think about uh, with the whole sort of war on Christmas thing, is that all right. We Christians, guess what? We stole the date from, you know, from the pagans. You know, it's not, it's not that it's, Christmas has always been celebrated then and, and, and sort of other groups started, you know, trying to de-emphasize Christianity or, or something like that. We did it first. Right? Let's be honest about that. It was right. that date was specifically chosen to draw attention away from the winter solstice, solstice celebrations, right? So the same thing that everybody's complaining about people doing to Christmas, we did it first. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, Dale took care of that. He he just back to celebrating winter solstice, you know, <laughs> and you know. So careful, you know, man. Dale. These guys hear about us. <laughs> I'm next. <laughs> oh, he, he's the he's the Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Ohio. <laughs> you know, just 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 keep that straight, okay? Well, okay, you know, yeah, Ohio. <clears throat> anyway, we we gotta watch out lest uh, anything happens. We get blamed for it. Um, but anyway, let's move on here. Um, where where should we go? Um, well, let's talk. I mean, the, one of the things that that other guy, uh, the, our three D Christmas was going to do. Somebody was going to do a a, uh, a a thing on the Christmas star. What was the Christmas star? So let's go ahead and and talk about uh, 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 this astronomer uh, down in um, uh, what was it? The University of uh, Nebraska. Yeah, and uh, he had uh, was a leading candidate to be the head of an observatory at the University of Kentucky in um, 2007, and uh, he um, <clears throat> uh, was passed over for the position, and he wound up being he's doing something in Texas, and now he is suing the University of Kentucky, claiming that. Um, um, he uh, was discriminated against and not given the position because of his religious beliefs. 
All right. So now <clears throat> I know what you're all thinking, and it's not exactly what you're thinking. All right. It's not that he's an outspoken young earth creationist, right? And especially in Kentucky, um, where the, um, the creation museum, you know, that's gotten a lot of press and stuff like that. Um, this is a guy who, um, it says he rejects charges that he denies biological evolution and distances himself from literal interpretations of the Bible, right? So it's it's not that he's like an outspoken young earth creationist, right? He's not, and, and and not even you know there's there's really no indication that he is a young earth creationist, right? Right. But he is an evangelical, and he says that um, at the end of his interview, uh, you know the job interview, the chairman of the physics and astronomy department asked about his religious beliefs. Right? Guess what? You can't do that in a job interview. Right. Well, more than more, more than that, it says that the chairman, whose name was Michael Cavagano, stated he had personally researched Gasco's religious beliefs, and uh, that uh, they and his beliefs and his expression of them would be a matter of concern to the dean. Um. And then, just to make even more fun, because whenever you get into these discoveries, it's always a lot of fun. And one of the things is uh, was some of the emails that went back and forth in considering him. And so uh, um, one staff member, Sally Schaefer, said, Clearly this man is complex and likely fascinating to talk with, but potentially evangelical. He's potentially evangelical. Yeah, you know... Um, Uh, uh, and, you know, uh, um, and then somebody else, uh, a biology professor said, uh, you know, you know, pointed to the, uh, uh, creation museum and says, well, we might just say, well, how the creation museum set up an outreach office in biology. Um, professor, he was teaching astronomy. <laughs> okay. They really are two different subjects. I don't know if you know that. One deals with, you know, biology and plants and animals and their vertebrate and invertebrate and all kinds of different stuff. The other deals with planets and stars and don't know if you know that, but it's true. Well, it, you know, and the irony there is that um, a lot of times I see um, creationists, young earth creationists, um, sort of they talk about evolution and and what they're actually talking about is is planets and they sort of say evolution to refer to any sort of old earth model. Right. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, to see someone on the other side make that same mistake, um, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you... But I mean, yeah, the fact here that they specifically asked him about his religious beliefs, they didn't ask him what he believes about evolution, which is arguably a, a scientific, you know, um, you know, mm-hmm. that I could, I could understand or, um, you know, or something along that line, right? If he's an astronomer, you could ask him about, um, his position on the age of the universe or, or something like that. Okay. And, and I could understand them asking that kind of a question. All right. And that's and, a legitimate question for an astronomer to ask because what are the things you deal with are things that are, you know, X number of light years away, and some of them are more than 6,000 light years or 10,000 light years away. Right. <clears throat> okay. And so, so those are, that's a legitimate question. Asking the guy if he's, what his religious beliefs are? No, you can't ask that. I mean, that's a clear case of religious discrimination. I mean, if you ask him that and then hire him, you could be sued for hiring him for that reason. I mean, right. that's just and an off-limits the, question. Right. I mean, because I, I, I can't wait to get this, for him to get this guy on uh, the stand and say, oh, no, I, I want to get Sally Schaefer on the stand and say, so would you have problems if he was potentially Muslim? <laughs> what about potentially Buddhist? Would you have a problem with that? What about potentially atheist? You know, what, what, you know potentially Jewish? Are you an anti-Semite? Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
I mean, you know, I mean, what, what, you know, I mean, you know, what, what, oh, God. And that's, by the way, and just the other thing, you never put remarks like that in email. Because <laughs> it's forever. Never put it in writing. One of the, one of the, later on, one of the comments on there, the king of the guys says, you know, it's a lot of, he, his wife does litigation in these types of areas, and it's interesting that in the paper trail, suddenly he's about to say, I want to come over to your office and talk about this. <laughs> you know, so, what did you talk about in the, your office? I don't recall. <laughs> I can't really remember the substance of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, that you can get away with. But when it's an email, you got it in writing right there. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, I hope he uh, wins. I really do. Um, yeah. Yeah, this isn't a question of, of science or, or anything like that. This is flat out case. I mean, this this is pretty clear cut, and uh, so uh, yeah, you you just as soon as you ask a person's religious beliefs during a job interview, unless it's a church, <laughs> unless it's a church or a religiously affiliated organization, yeah, you can't it's, do it. Can't do it. You're in bad shape. Uh, they won't have to offer him the job. But the um, Kentucky taxpayers will probably be out some money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So, uh, so they they probably won't be um, flying any uh, Christian flags there. Probably not. But maybe if you win the lottery. You this is a really weird story. Okay. Right? Well, I think here's here's how you're trying to be fair. So, um, they, um, King, North Carolina, King, North Carolina. Apparently there's a, there's a war memorial and apparently there are these Christian flags flying over it. And, um, so that got to be a problem. And so the, the town of King said, okay, instead of doing it this way, we're going to let people apply to fly, put a flag up each week. And, um, then once we, then we're going to just draw the names out of a hat and those will be people who put up a flag and the flag can be whatever they want. So long as it's not obscene or, you know, Mm -hmm. so, um, and 52 people, uh, um, drew the, uh, 52 people won and out of the 52, 49 wanted to fly a Christian flag. The other three wanted a bare pole. You will unite or you will fall. So, <laughs> you imagine what that's going to look like when there's a bare pole those those three weeks out of the year. Everybody's just going to go, well, except for, it, I'm sure it's a big issue in the town, but, you know, um, anybody that's sort of not aware of the controversy, they're just going to go, somebody forgot to put up the oh. flag this week. <laughs> No, I know, no. There's 80 residents, 77, uh, 80 people applied, 77 uh, wanted to fly a Christian flag, three don't want, one want no flag at all. So they'll select 52. Well, there's a good chance then, you know, that all 52 weeks would probably be, you know, a Christian flag. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I you know, it, it seems. I, I don't to, know how you can be any fairer. You know, it says the our good friends at Americans United for the Separation of Church and State want to, aren't certain whether they think the policy resolves their issues with it. But what else are you going to do? I mean, it's a fair policy. It's you know, it's it's you know, you don't like you know, um, you know, did you guys did you tell your members put in an application? Yeah. You know, anybody could put in the application. No, really, anything. You know, Maybe you guys in America separated need to put up a new flag yourselves. How about one that, how about a white flag? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I think it's time to give up. Um, You know, and this isn't a matter of sort of forcing your beliefs on anybody. And and, and they've clearly made a point of, of doing this so that it's not the the state or whatever endorsing any particular religion, right? You know, mm-hmm. they've made it clear that they're opening it up to anybody. And it's the whole thing that this this whole concept of sort of separation of church and state or, or whatever, however you want to, what term you want to use, 
Um, the idea is that the government doesn't endorse any one particular religion, right? right. And, and they're, they're not. not. So you're good. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody's got equal chance of winning. Pay your monies, take your chances. And you just, you know, they, they draw the names out of a hat. So not that I know what it's supposed to do. <laughs> no. <You know? laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not sure what flying that, you know, a, a flag with a cross is supposed to do, but, you know, it's a loose time. Just doing something. Maybe they should have a um, CD, an MP3 playing Johnny Cash music all the time. That that might do it. There you go. All right. So, um, we got here. Just this article was actually sent to me uh, by a friend who's an atheist um, via Facebook, and um, and he thought it was kind of interesting. This Trinity United Methodist Church in Homewood, Alabama, and um, the pastor there um i think they should change the name from homewood to sweet home <laughs> um, dave i think they're doing a service about uh, johnny cash they could be doing services about leonard skinner <laughs> um, he's the pastor of the contact contemporary service i i thought that was interesting he's the pastor of that particular service I don't know. I guess they they do things really differently than 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 we do. But um, <clears throat> they're uh, beginning a, a three week sermon series on uh, called "Sin, Death, and Redemption." They'll examine the inspirational messages of Johnny Cash's life and music. He's got scriptural references all over his songs. Bernhard said they speak to something in people's experience. And so, so I, I thought this was a really interesting. The New Testament reading will be done by Cash himself, taken from recordings of him reading the Bible. And then there will be video clips featuring uh, Johnny Cash singing and scenes from the movie about his life, Walk the Line. And a homemade mock prison cell will serve as a prop on the stage. So are they going to show scenes from his uh, uh, movie about Jesus, The Gospel Road, with the blonde Jesus? <laughs> I haven't seen that one. I'm not a huge Johnny Cash one. fan, so um, I've got oh, nothing my against father him. Was. And I, I don't mind him, you know. I'll, I'll listen to his music, but it's it's not like I have any Johnny Cash in my iTunes library, you know. Are they going to sing? Are, are, are you going to hear a boy named Sue? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, if they do, they're going to have to probably change the lyrics a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a boy named Hey <laughs> There you go. Well, as I was say, they're going to do uh, Folsom Prison Blues and I Walk the Line as part of the service. Um, this Those songs uh, didn't make it our hymnal. <laughs> nope. Uh, it says they're also, uh, it says they've gotten gimmicky before with sermons devoted to Jimmy Buffett and Harry Potter themes. All right. Now, <clears throat> the reason I kind of that I chose the gospel the story. Margarita. I, I like to see the Buffett Jimmy Buffett ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're giving everybody a margarita when they come in. <laughs> welcome to Margar. Welcome to Trinity Methodist Margaritaville. <laughs> yeah, they do communion a little different there. It's got the little umbrellas in the cups, you know. <laughs> Lime and a little bit of sugar or salt around the top of the. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is getting very irre- irreverent, but you know, I just, I just try to, you know, um, there's spiritual things in, in, in that in Harry Potter. You, you could, if, you, God, depending on how gimmicky you get, you pull that off. I'm trying to figure out the Jimmy Buffett. I just, yeah. Well, okay. So, <clears throat> but here's the thing. It, this is a, a discussion. I was listening to a, a um, podcast episode. It was like a presentation from some conference um, where the they were talking about um, that they use a lot of um, like movie clips and things like that um, in the as sermon illustrations, and um, and there's there's websites out there that are specifically for churches that have movie clips available, um, and like you can sign up so you can get all the the licensing and everything to, to do it all legal, and. Um, so you can show clips, uh, and then you know, sort of use that as your sort of parable or um, 
or illustration. And, um, and it was interesting that the, um, the search, he played this audio clip from a nearby church to him where the pastor was talking about, yeah, they're, they're using this, they're using these, um, these movie clips. Uh, and in this case, it was a, a series, um, from based on the Spider-Man, um, one of the, uh, it was either the, the series or just one one of the Spider-Man movies. Oh yeah. gosh, don't tell me the theme of the sermon was with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> well, but you know, there's stuff like Spider-Man 3, you know, had some really great redemption themes in it that, you know, when I was watching, I was going, oh, I could totally use this, except for I'd have to use too long of a clip to really get, um, you know, what was going on and... And I wouldn't want to spoil the movie for anybody that hadn't seen it, but, um, but you know, there's, there's all sorts of stuff out there. And, and, you know, so the, the question is, um, oh, the, anyway, the, the audio clip that he played was this guy saying, um, uh, he's using this to talk about God. Well, I don't know what God he's talking about, but it, it's not our God or, you know, or, or something. It's not the God of the Bible. Cause you know, you couldn't possibly use a movie clip to talk about God. Um, but, uh, you know, this is sort of the point of this is is to speak the language of the people, right? right. And you know, and people are are connected with movies and, and things like that, and and so you use this illustration, and and people go, oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And um, I like his thing here. He says you can overdo the pop cultural references. Um, Barnhart said, okay, and that's that that you do need to okay, you, you know, <clears throat> you do need to put a. Um, a line there. You know, the Lutheran Confessions, it's, you know, and, and I believe, I'm one of these people who strongly believe that the Lutheran Confession gives permission for variety and, in worship and alternative in worship. Okay, you know, uh, the more I read them, the more I'm convinced that that's, that is exactly what they say. Uh, you know, those guys who believe that are, that, that, that the, that the mass is part of the essay of Lutheranism, I disagree. It's, you know, I don't think it's part of the essence of Lutheranism at all. Um, however, the confessions also say that you do this, and, but you try to avoid frivolity. And the question is, when do you, when do you hit that tipping point? And we're now in for, to frivolity. Yeah, you know, one guy told me about being at a church in California, and they had, you know, for 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 communion, they used champagne, and they had three bottles of champagne, and they popped each one, and the people said, "He, hallelujah, as the you know the the thing popped up, the the stopper popped up in the air." You know, okay, we're into frivolity here. Um, you know, we well, uh, mentioned that uh, that Dr. Seuss, you know, service that was. That wasn't just frivolous; it was it was poorly done. <laughs> but uh, right, you know. So so, how much of this, you know, using all these, you know, three weeks of references to Johnny Cash, uh, does this just does this go into frivolity now? Find a happy place. Find a happy place. Find a happy place. I don't know the the sort of mock prison on the on the stage. That that I thought was kind of pushing it. I mean, and without actually having seen it. I, I'm not going to pass judgment, you know. I mean, certainly there's stuff from um, <clears throat> from Johnny Cash's music and, and life that can be used as illustrations. There's no question about that, mm -hmm. All right? There's stuff in movies. I had, um, the one of the services, the churches that I attended while I was um, on uh, on Christmas break was it, it, they were doing a um, an Advent and Christmas series on Scrooge, and um, <clears throat> and it was they showed a movie clip of the one with the the Christmas Carol with um, oh Captain Picard, um, and uh, and 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 it was just like okay we show this little clip and then he preached on it you know and 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 talked about. Uh, this one was specifically, and it was always said of Scrooge that um, that he kept Christmas better than anyone, or, or something like that. A quote from mm -hmm. the from the story, and 
<clears throat> and so he talked. The pastor talked about what does it mean to um, to to keep Christmas well, and um, and it was, it was a great message, you know. And it it wasn't about Scrooge; it was about Christ, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and and so uh, you know, I thought it was really well done, um, and. And so it really depends on sort of how you're doing it and why. Like, you know, you talk about Harry mm-hmm. Potter, right? Yeah, there's lots of, of, of Christian themes running through Harry Potter. Um, in fact, by the time you get to the end book without spoiling anything, um, yeah, there's those Christian themes in there are deliberate. <laughs> right. Well, she even talks about, well, she said that her books are all about death. How do you face death? That's, that's a Christian theme. Um, I preached, um, what Sunday was it? Um, I think it was the last Sunday of the church year. Um, I did a, I, which was, yeah, because the, the, the movie had just come out. So, I, you know, I, I did a, a one on uh, um, <clears throat> how Harry po- how Jesus defeated the three unforgivable curses in Harry Potter. Um, and then when I did, um, uh, one time I, 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 I can't remember exactly how I did it, but I tied it into to, to, to the, uh, the Lord of the Rings. And the kind of people hobbits were, and 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 how, you know, I can't remember exactly how that thing worked, and but people thought it worked, you know, it was, yeah, it was a real geek sermon, you know, I, I confess. Okay. But, um, but here's the thing: did you when you did your Harry Potter one, did you walk in yes. carrying a broom? No. Right. Okay. There's the line. Yeah. Right. You know, and and I remember hearing a few years back. I think we. Um, we talked about it. These church they were having Harry Potter services, and um, where it was like, yeah, I think Jesus is probably in there somewhere. Um, it's one thing to use an illustration, or even t- and even if you're gonna, and uh, you know, I'm even looking at this, going, okay, um, not being super familiar with those songs, um, but if if you've got a a couple of songs um, by an artist and you're gonna t- sort of use this artist as your illustration um, <clears throat> and you want to do those songs, depending on the songs, you might be able to do it, especially if you can, so if you sort of tie into your message, um, you know, as you, as you sing the song mm-hmm. or, or listen to this song, you know, sort of look at it from this perspective. Right. Well, he, he, and, and, and Johnny Cash did have some very spiritual things. He did feel he he was trapped in sin and addiction, wasn't that? He felt trapped. He was. Mm-hmm. And he, he did find relief and he did uh, 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 change his life and did understand the idea. Of, I think I think his his thing there, sin, death, redemption. Wow. We, we can't we can't. All, yeah. Man, that you, you can't beat a, a, a three things like that. You know. Yeah. Although uh, I, I, it's I not, hope. He had redemption in all of them. <laughs> like, oh, dang, this I week we're talking the about the end. This week we're talking about death. Okay, we're going to save we to redemption for week three. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I can understand that. I, one of my kids in my confirmation class, we've been studying the Ten Commandments, and you know, you get into you know dealing with the Fourth Commandment, parents, all the stuff in Fifth Commandment, you know, uh, all the life issues. And, Abortion and suicide, and, you know, all these heavy things. And then we did Sixth Commandment and got all the heavy things of adultery, divorce, uh, premarital sex, and all this heavy stuff. And one at the end of all this, one of the girls hold up her hands and goes, Pastor, I said, yeah, she says, is such a thing as a happy commandment? <laughs> uh, Lex Semper accuse it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, there isn't. She goes, because I'm going to why i'm getting real bummed out by these you know <laughs> so so yeah i feel like that hey maybe you guys though out there in in in, in podcast land have a different viewpoint on uh, uh the services maybe you you know uh maybe you've done a johnny cash service yourself maybe you've done a june carter cash service i don't know uh maybe you're not a draco malfoy service uh let us know and give us your views and opinions at podcast at crossfeednews.com yeah, um, just thanks for everybody for hanging in there. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been kind of off for a while, just a lot of crazy things going on besides Christmas and, um, just got busy with some other stuff. And, um, <clears throat> so, so thanks for, if this is the first time seeing us, uh, happen to stumble across us at, uh, YouTube or something like that, um, want to let you know that, 
you can go to crossfeednews.com slash podcast um, to get the the slightly higher quality feed, uh, not higher quality content, but the video is a little better. <laughs> um, actually, as uh, and if you ever go there and it says something like site suspended, like actually as we record this, um, the the site is down because uh, we got hacked. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so if you ever see that, just like come back a day later. It, it's happened to us a few times. It's like maybe, I don't know, once a year or so we get hacked. Um, and uh, so and I, I found out about it because I got an email from somebody <laughs> that said, uh, and there was somebody who's who's new to the show. So, um, speaking of feedback, <clears throat> so um, anyway, hope everybody had a really uh, blessed Christmas. Um, we had a uh, our sanctity of human life uh, service today. Um, speaking of heavy issues, um, and uh, so this week being that sort of. Uh, Roe v. Wade observance uh, week. Um, a reminder that uh, not only that God loves everybody, he also loves people um, who have done things that they're not particularly proud of. Um, <clears throat> so, um, but really just, you know, thank you all for, for listening and watching. I want you to know how much God loves you. And, um, invite you to to struggle along with us as we uh sort of hash through things and and look at different things and and talk about you know what's good what's not and and what do you do when you find yourself in different situations so and uh <clears throat> go pack <laughs> mm, yeah <laughs> yeah Whatever. Uh, <laughs> now I bummed out Jim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Hey, God bless everybody. Take okay. care. Yeah, everybody. God bless.